What is the difference between blood tests and PET scans for surveillance of patients with Merkel? One simple answer for why has circulating tumor DNA not been more widely adopted is the paper hasn't been published yet and the study is not fully kind of complete yet. The early studies and studies in other cancers all point in the direction that the big study seems to be going and that is that it's more sensitive, more specific, in other words, just more accurate than any type of scan. And of course, it doesn't involve contrast dye that can be damaging to the kidneys and cause allergies. It doesn't involve radiation, which is sort of low risk if you'd have a moderate number of scans, but fundamentally it's a decent amount of radiation if you're having many scans and especially if you're a younger person at risk for developing cancer later. So it's very nice to not have those toxicities. You also don't need to travel for it. You just get your blood drawn wherever and it gets sent in. So I think that when those data become available and we're clear on how it's managed in terms of insurance and how it's ordered and such, that's gonna be the main tool that we use. There probably will be an ongoing role for the antibody test, but it's in several ways not as effective as the circulating tumor DNA test. Uh, so probably not all patients will be getting that so often and then scans you need to get once you suspect there's something going on with the blood test coming back as positive then you need a scan because these blood tests cannot tell you where it is in the body uh you, they can tell you, you need to go see your doc and maybe you or your doc will find a little lump or bump or something but you really need to get a scan at that time so we're not saying it's the end of scans by any stretch and we need baseline scans and such but for surveillance routinely we're not doing a lot of scans and I think in another one or two years, that's the way it's going to be done most places. How long should people do immunotherapy treatment? So we're talking about immunotherapy for disease that was measurable as, as a starting point. And we watch it shrink and it either shrinks partially or it shrinks completely. Once we get beyond a year or two and the patient's doing well, and especially if they had a complete response, all the cancer that we could see is gone, those people probably are okay to stop after a couple of years. What we like to do often rather than just stopping them cold turkey is to cut the amount of drug often by increasing the time interval between doses by several fold, maybe three or four fold. And so instead of every three weeks or two weeks, it's every few months to get one dose. And we actually know there's good biological, immunological evidence that the antibodies aren't floating free in the blood anymore, but they're sticking to the T cells for a long time and they're having their effect on the T cells for much longer than just a couple weeks. So we think there's significant effect and benefit for quite some time. And for at least maybe one more year, we just one treatment every four months or something like that, and then eventually you stop. And it's harder when the patient has no side effects and is doing great, um, and you're like, well, do we really want to mess with this <laughs> this boat? Because uh, we don't need to rock this boat. It's going great. But high level, you know, two or a little more years, and it's probably fine to decrease the, the intensity. And in some cases, it's going to be fine to stop. And in other cases, that's going to come back and we restart the drug and it'll respond again and we know that you know we didn't treat long enough but i think after a couple of years it'd be the high level question when can people stop worrying that their merkel will return i like data and we now have a recurrence risk calculator that clearly tells you the number uh you know that you of risk you had at the beginning and where you are now based on four or five factors. It doesn't take into account a hundred factors, you know, some of which we don't even know, so it's not perfect, but it's pretty good. And it often will start off at your risk of ever having this come back as 50% and then, then it's 15% after a couple years and then eventually it gets down there to less than 2%. And when you're in that less than 2% range and you're 
and you've been there for a little while and or you're at five years or more, five years is a long time for Merkel. It usually, usually comes back by three years, even four years. And by the time you're at five, it's very uncommon for it to come back. So you put that combination together and we are graduating people. Somewhere in that range or even before, we're saying, look, your risk of this coming back is not as high as getting breast cancer or heart disease or colon cancer or you know, pneumonia or something like that. So we don't need to so aggressively follow you.